All right, are we live? Let's see, I think we are. <laughs> okay, welcome back to, I gotta do something with this hair. Um, Cicadas, Kim's Critter Classes. I haven't done a class in months. I don't know if anyone is here. <laughs> um, but I figured let me do a class on cicadas, periodicals, because uh, it's almost that time. Um, the magic temperature is 64 degrees. 64 degrees is what you want the soil temperature to be. And then you're going to have um, these guys coming out. Okay, so before we go into that, I do... Uh, critter classes although I haven't been doing them because I went back to work full-time uh, I was doing them um, I guess during COVID last year uh, online virtual classes and uh, I got sent back to work August I think of last year I've been working kind of full-time then I took some time off recently to try to get back into doing online classes before I start my new job which is gonna be another full-time job anyway um, so, so we're kind of not doing, I'm trying to get a hair clip. We're trying to, <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> so we're trying to do some um, classes in between uh, if it works out or not. And then maybe some weekend classes, some scout classes, maybe brownie badge, um, poisonous venomous for the Boy Scouts and stuff. But anyway, so that's kind of what I'm trying to work on now. Um, I'm still doing out school classes. Uh, I'll probably be doing varsity tutor classes maybe at some point. I have the final, final stage interview thing on Monday. I have to do a, uh, one of these basically for 10 minutes or something like that. So of course it's going to be on bugs. Um, but anyway, so that's, what, that's what has been going on. So again, we're going to talk about the periodicals. Um, 17 year brood is coming out. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot? I had this really big map downstairs. I might have to, oh, well, you know what? I have it right here too. All right, good call. I guess I already printed it out for my, I have a cicada class on out school. Um, also that I, uh, I think I've done a t uh, like two of them, um, just on cicadas that some kids were interested in. So that was kind of interesting, but anyway. Uh, oof, it's complicated. Anyway, so what is so special about 17 year cicadas and what, you know, what, what does that even mean? So you have these bugs. Again, we all know what a bug is, right? If we get, if we get our fake bugs out or we can get our live bugs out, either one, the, the roaches. There's so many roaches. <laughs> they keep getting bigger <laughs> and they keep multiplying. Um, yeah, there, I have so many roaches. I'm going to have to split the colony up. But anyway, that's another story. So anyway, a bug insect. We're going to use this guy. Um, three body parts, head, uh, thorax, abdomen. Your six legs. I don't need a notification from Target about dresses. Thank you. Um, your antenna, okay, this is an adult, the adult has wings, so th this is what the emergence is, the emergence is going to be the adults. The nymphs, okay, and that's, um, uh, incomplete metamorphosis. Complete would be, you know, a butterfly, a caterpillar going from a chrysalis into uh, a, a butterfly. Caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly, so that's kind of complete turns into mush then uh somehow comes back together into a butterfly whereas incomplete it's kind of just like a juvenile um version of uh of the adult it's just that the adults usually have wings and um some of them do not have functional mouth parts okay mm, there's a hair so if you remember um I remember all my all my handy stuff from all my other classes. Here we go. We have our straw. All right. I don't even know if anyone's watching, but it could always be played back later. So 
we have our monarch we have this mouth part right here okay all bugs have mouth parts whether they're mandibles um this one doesn't really you can't really see them mandibles whether they have the straw okay the straw is called a proboscis okay but they're still mouth parts it's just depending on the bug they're modified mouth parts all right so mandibles would actually just be the mandibles closed together to form a straw so if you ever raise butterflies you notice that the proboscis is actually in two pieces <laughs> all right modified mandibles um so our cicada i forgot to get the uh and you know what i think i have them right here is this it yeah um you can actually see on the shells, if you look closely enough, shells. It's actually Xuvia, but whatever. Okay. Um, this is an adult. This is a dog day. It's a different one. If you see this thing, excuse my nail polish, that thing sticking out right there, sticking down. Let me use my pointer. That might help. Um, this thing right here, okay? That's a proboscis on a cicada. All right. Can they bite? It's like, can a butterfly bite? You're, you're not getting bit with this, okay? Um, yeah, mosquitoes have them, proboscis and stuff, but that's different. These guys, they're not gonna be feeding as adults, okay? They're not. They're, they have two week lifespan, if that. They're out there to mate, they're out there to lay eggs and die and get eaten. That is, that is their, their function in life. Staying to ground for 17 years. <laughs> As a, as a kid, <laughs> as a juvenile, and then they um, emerge as adults. They climb up a tree, all right? Uh, they come out, the skin the, on the exoskeleton, exoskeleton, exo outside skeleton splits, and you have your cicada that comes out. All right. Again, the, the pictures I have are dog day cicadas because I've always missed the emergence of a periodical brood for because I was either in Texas or I was in New Jersey at the wrong time. This time I am in New Jersey for the right time. And the right time is when the soil temperature is on average 64 degrees. Why 64 degrees? Because that's a nice temperature. Okay, so 64 degrees, and usually you will see them, um, in my experience, <laughs> uh, two days after um, a really good rain or a day after, like, you know, just like a sprinkling. Because the ground is a little bit softer, and they'll come up out of the ground. So, what's a dog day cicada? Dog day cicadas are the ones that you see and hear every single year, Okay. Not so special, but they're kind of cool. Each individual lives in the ground for um, three to seven years, you know, give or take. Not synchronized, okay? So their emergence is not synchronized, which means that is why you're going to see them every single year, okay? Yes, Neo. All right. Uh, it just, we lost our... I think my phone might be dying. <laughs> okay, let's get through this. Um, I'm trying to make it bright, hold on. Okay, not working, that's all right. So these guys you're gonna see every year. Okay, there we go. Um, again, not synchronized. So what's so special about the periodicals Okay, the periodicals are the ones that have the red eyes, if you've seen pictures of them. What's so special is that each one is in the ground for 17 years, and their emergence is synchronized over like a two-week period. All of them will emerge at the same exact time. So that's why it's like an invasion of cicadas. It's not an invasion. They're, they've been in the ground. They, it's just synchronized. How is it synchronized? You can go into hormones, you can go into some weird stuff. I'm not gonna go into that. Oh, here's another picture. This is the underneath part 
uh, of a dog day cicada. And you can see the proboscis right there. This part looks a little bit different. This is how you know you're looking at a boy dog day because this is what vibrates. There's no, they're not doing this with their legs to make the sound. They're not rubbing their wings. It's actually this um, membrane right here that vibrates. Um, oh, here it is. Again, on this is your girl and this one's your boy. So this is the thing that vibrates on the dog day ones on your periodicals okay it's more it's a little bit different the uh, membranes okay um that are going to vibrate and then you also get the other question well do they sting again stingers are what stingers are modified ovipositors what's an ovipositor an ovipositor ova meaning egg posit Deposit, deposit, egg depositor. So basically, it's the thing that deposits eggs, but it's modified in your hornets, your wasps, your bees, your girls um, to sting because they're not laying eggs, only the queen lays the eggs, right? So it's a modified stinger. On our girl cicadas, okay, um, there's an ovipositor, and that's to lay eggs in a branch. Okay. Are they destructive? Not really. I mean, you might have some limb breakage, uh, like saplings and stuff, but it's not like they're, it's not like a swarm of locusts. They're not locusts. Texas. <laughs> Hello, Texas. Cicadas are not locusts. Locusts are not cicadas. Okay. Just, just stop. Okay. Beetles are not locusts. Locusts are locusts. They're in the grasshopper family. Just okay cicadas are cicadas they're their own species there's like i don't know five seven thousand different types um you got really little tiny ones in texas too that are really cool um so a locust is something like this although this is more of a grasshopper but similar um organic mushroom grown kit we don't need that and this is your cicada okay looks looks nothing like a grasshopper locust thing all right so again, your periodicals, they're synchronized, periodical. There's different broods. Why they call it a brood? Fancy word for group. So you have a group, group 10 is brood at, is, is that, wait. Yeah, the 17 year, you have one, two, three. Oh, I, I don't think these are all in existence anymore though. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 broods of the 17 year and then three of the 13 year. So here's our handy little map. All right, here's our East Coast. God, I haven't done this in a while. All right, so New Jersey is this part right here. All right, so we will have brood. I thought it was brood 10. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see, 2021. Yeah, brood X is uh is the one that is 2021 okay and that's gonna be the yellow one so that's gonna be down south over here um again why is that so cool because they've been in the ground for 17 years on roots eating well sucking the the root juice basically um and they all synchronize the emergence okay so you're gonna you're gonna find these holes. They're about the size of a dime, okay? Um, some people get them mixed up with uh, like digger wasps and stuff. These are very, very specific sizes. Um, there's no dirt really on the outside that you'll see from being from other stuff being dug up, okay? Um, or like ant hills where they have the the sand around it. It's just a hole, okay? And um, about the size of a dime. Again, 64 degrees, a couple days after a nice rain, you'll see a whole bunch of these <laughs> and hopefully a whole bunch of these. All right. Again, mid-May, New Jersey, it's been kind of cold, I think, so it might be a little bit later, uh, South Jersey and stuff. But there's different broods, all right? And why do we, why do we care? <sighs> if you look around, especially in New Jersey, um, I guess even Pennsylvania, there's a lot of construction. 
All right, so you have these guys that are in the ground for like 17 years. If you've left your hometown or, you know, went to an area and then visited 20 years later, it looks nothing like it used to. There's condos, there's strip malls, there's buildings. Um, so you're wiping out, you're wiping out populations of these guys, even the 13-year ones that have been in the ground for that long because landscapes change. There's construction, like I said, um, people involvement. Um, so this is where your citizen science comes in. Um, I'm on my phone. I don't have the apps on the iPad here, um, but there's a lot of apps going on because 17 years ago, we really didn't have apps. We just had um, pen and paper, okay, and try to coordinate stuff that way, try to get data that way. But now that we have our iPads and we have our iPhones and stuff, you snap a picture, submit, it gives the GPS coordinates, and we can tell, um, you know, where the emergence is, all right? So uh, Cicada Safari, that's the big one. That has like a mecca of information on periodical cicadas, Cicada Safari. It has the different broods, the different species. There's different species in the 17 year ones. Um, it's not all the same species. They're all periodicals, but there's different uh, species, I believe. I don't know if there's different subspecies, but there's different species species of Magica cicada, however you pronounce the genus. Okay, um, so it's not just one species of 17 year. There's different species um, within the different broods. Usually, you know, for the geographical location that they're emerging. All right. Um, so yeah, that's why they want the picture so they can decipher um, what species it is. Okay. But, you know, in general, if, if you're in a certain location, it's going to be a certain species, um, except where they overlap, okay? So that's where the picture comes in. Um, and yeah, so 2020 or 2021 is the Brood X. That's, that's the really big one. That's, I think, the largest one. And then you have some of these other ones, these other broods that are coming out and you know, they're, they're not as large, they're not as um, reported and stuff. And then you have your seven, your 13 year ones. Every now and then, you know, you'll have, you'll have some that just aren't synchronized and you'll see periodicals um, over the 17 year ones. You're supposed to report that also, like, okay, it's year 15, I have a periodical out here. Um, you'll also see them, like if the ground floods, you'll see periodicals come up. You'll see other cicadas come up too. Uh, I saw it in Texas. It was like the weirdest thing. I was like, why are all these like coming up? But I, they don't want to drown. So they'll pop their head up. And then once the water recedes, they'll go back down to the ground. Um, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, so you're going to have them emerge. They'll find a mate, hopefully. They're going to lay these things in branches. All right, those are the eggs. And then they're gonna be these little nymphs, real real tiny, real small. And they're gonna, um, I think they fall. These are laid, these are laid uh, in a slit in a branch. And I think they fall to the ground and then that's when they dig um, like a foot, a foot deep or so. Uh, into the ground and then they just stay there once they're there that's it they're just it's not like they're going from tree to tree once they're they're on that tree so if that tree disappears that cicada disappears it's not like they're you know moving moving around underground a whole lot they might move from like one root next to each other but they're not going from tree to tree and to tree and stuff okay yeah it's not gonna happen um so yeah, so you might have the sapling year one, and then, you know, 17 years later, it's gonna be, you know, a, a decent sized tree. I have my, my uh, uh, Arbor Day tree from eighth grade outside, the only one that's ever grown. And that thing is from 19, uh, 1993, um, you know, so it's, it's grown a lot, so. 
um, you know, stuff changes, landscapes change. So um, 17 years ago, stuff looked different. 17 years from now, stuff is going to look different. So um, these guys, they stay in the ground for that long, emerge, and that's it. Uh, why so many emerge? Well, it's kind of like if you remember um, Deathly Hollows. I think it's the last one uh, when their their <laughs> Voldemort is at at the um, at Hogwarts and stuff, and you know they they did the spell over the uh, the school and everything, and then he sends out the first the first group. That's kind of what it is. So you have the first ones emerge. All right they're gonna get eaten they get eaten right away okay because it's the first they're the first you know they're helpless they're the first ones to come out everything wants to eat them birds dogs cats saw a thing with snakes oh you know watch out for the copperheads maybe like a milk snake or a garter snake i don't think a copperhead's gonna go after a cicada I mean, I'm not saying it can happen, but I I don't think that's gonna happen. Okay, don't don't you know quote me on that, but yeah, with the oh the all the snakes it's gonna attract all the snakes and you'll step on them because of the camouflage. <sighs> I don't think that's gonna happen, but anyway. Um, so yeah, it's a big feeding frenzy for a lot of different animals. And then in the middle is, you know, when you kind of want to emerge. You don't want to be in the beginning or at the tail end, okay? The beginning, you're going to get eaten. The middle is when you have the bulk of them coming, um, you know, coming up. So it's kind of like being one in a, in a swarm, okay? So you don't, you know, if you're getting chased by a cheetah, uh, and you're, you know, a zebra, you kind of don't want to be <laughs> at the end of the pack or in the beginning of the pack because you kind of stand out. You want to be in the middle there. Um, so that's kind of what, that's kind of what the cicadas are about. So it's safety in numbers. So within those two weeks, hopefully you're emerging in the middle of that week somewhere, middle of those two weeks, you do what you need to do and then you die. All right. So you'll have a lot of you'll have a lot of dead ones all over the place because they literally just die. I mean, you'll see it, um, you know, with the dog day ones, but usually uh, you're going to have <clears throat> your cicada killers, which are those really, really cool, big, huge um, uh, wasps. Uh, I don't feel like looking for the picture. The hovercraft ones that just, you know, and they're gonna pick them up, spiders, uh, some other different wasps and stuff. They'll use them as hosts, but it's kind of overwhelming. There's too many cicadas for uh, the predators. So that's why you're gonna have, you know, bodies and stuff all over, or, you know, uh, cicadas uh, all over the place once they die, because they just literally just drop, because they're not, they're not eating, okay? They're not eating, so they use up their energy store, and they just die, all right? Um, I forgot where I was going with that, but, um, so yeah, so it's going to be really cool this year. Uh, it's the seventh. We probably got like two weeks or so, maybe three weeks because it's like going to be cold tomorrow. Um, but again, 64 degrees is your magic number. If you want it to be really dorky and there's like equations that you could figure out with the uh, air temperature, um, to estimate how cold the ground is, or you could just get like a meat thermometer and plunge it into the ground. Um, you could do it that way too. I don't know how, how deep, uh, that actually measures, but you know, you, you can get an idea. Um, you're probably going to see stuff. Let's see. Brood X 20, 2021. Yeah, this really has them down south and in, uh, parts of Pennsylvania. And that looks like I don't know. That looks like really, 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 really North Philly um, on this map. Um, yeah, and then you have another one, 2024 and 2025, uh, other broods. But this is supposed to be the largest one. 
Okay, so hopefully, hopefully we'll get to see some stuff. And again, this is just a general map. So as we uh, use our citizen science, you take your picture, um, do your observations, and it's so simple now. Usually they just want a picture and then all the information can be um, acquired through that picture on the, uh, on the Cicada Safari app. They tell you exactly how they want the picture taken, okay? Um, and it's probably dead ones too. They just don't have to be alive because even if it's a dead one, it emerged in that area. They're not, it's not like they're flying 50 miles. Okay. Again, they don't have the energy stores to do that. So they're going to stay pretty local. All right. So even if it's a dead one, still take that picture. The same with the horseshoe crab. You find a dead horseshoe crab on the shore. It's got the tag on it. Still take a picture. So at least they know where, um, you know, where it popped up at okay um from where it was released and stuff so it's still information that can be used and it, they'll use that information to repopulate and update this map all right so i guess it's divided by counties okay so i don't know if you could see it all right so as we see them the counties will change, will have different colors and stuff for the different sightings as they're verified. All right, and there's different apps. I know um, the museums probably have apps. Again, this is an East Coast event, so uh, your American Museum, I haven't checked. I, I'm, I'm kind of um, behind on this because I just know of Cicada Safari and I know um, uh, a bug addict. I know he wants to do his own survey also, but I'm not sure where he's going through. Uh, I'm sure there's iNaturalist uh, bio um, blitzes going on, cicada blitzes going on. Um, not sure how that information is going to be gathered. There's a part of eBirds, I think, that is also doing cicada stuff. Um, I haven't looked at Journey North, and I haven't looked at Xerxes if they're doing stuff also. But Cicada Safari is like the number one app. Um, so get that on your phone, get that on your iPad, take a look at it. It tells you everything. That you can ever imagine on cicadas um there's uh links for songs there's links for pictures there's links on life cycles everything so that that's where you go for that um mm. so kind of oh i was talking for almost a half hour so if there are any questions um you know, just, just ask the questions. Um, we have a fun form here. I don't know where I, I took this off of. Oh, I can't even see. But it's, it, it's too small. I have my, my contacts in. Um, cicadas emerge after 17 years underground. Brood X, again. Brood X is the one that we're looking at. Um, will emerge in May throughout its range in the eastern United States. Loud and annoying and disgusting to some. No significant threat to animals. So it's not like they're, they're not, they can't sting. They can't sting and they can't bite. So just, just stop with that, all right? The worst they could do is hit you in the head. Um, I've personally never been hit in the head by a cicada. Um, yeah, I don't think I have. Um, Deep underground, a cicada nymphs have uh, fed. Oh, here we go. Oh, I can't read this. Is that right? Oh, this is older. This is from like. Deep underground, the cicada nymphs have fed on sap in tree roots since 19... 1987. That'd be 97. Yeah, this is this is an old one. This is from a. <laughs> this might be from the first round here. Um, no, seventeenth year. Da, 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 the male, the males fly into the trees and begin to call the females with loud buzzing. Okay, um, and the loud buzzing sound only the male cicadas. Okay, I didn't say that. Only the males are going to be making the noise because they're the only ones that have that membrane that vibrates to make that noise. Okay, so that's that's for the males. Um, let me try to read this. Uh, can be heard hundreds of feet away a pair of small drum-like ribbed membranes um, on each side of the abdomen contract uh, yada 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 cause it to buckle inward and produce a high-pitched tone again 
uh, even Google. Google has a lot of good uh, information also. They have the 3D periodical that you can look at all different uh, directions, make it fly and stuff. And they actually have a sound thing on there too. Um, decibel level uh, is gonna be in the range of 104 to 106. What does that mean? A motorcycle is in the range of 100 decibels, a jackhammer 90. Um, a rock concert 120. So if you're in the middle of that, it's gonna be loud. But I think it's awesome. You only see this like every 17 years if you're lucky all right and again some of these broods i think there used to be like 23 there used to be more they're, they're not they're gone they're they're extinct okay so you know you want to talk about habit habitat destruction um and i i wonder if sandy if anyone's gonna do sandy what what that impact might have been um, with the flooding and stuff and, and, you know, property loss and rebuilding stuff and, and everything. Uh, I've always wondered that, how, how hurricanes uh, come into play. Um, I, guess, I guess this is far enough from the coast uh, for Texas and Louisiana and stuff that it's not going to matter. But New Jersey is really the only coastal... Um, coastal state there that's going to have populations of the cicada uh, emergence. So I wonder if anyone's done a uh, study on that. That would be interesting. Um, but anyway, getting back to our, our form here, facts about cicadas. Uh, oh, okay. So this is from 2004. <laughs> uh, cicadas emerging in 2004 belong to brood X. So yeah, 2004 was the last time we saw brood X because if I do my math correctly, that was 17 years ago. All right, so the ones that emerged in 2004, we're seeing, we're seeing the next generation, okay? So where were you in 2004? I was still in New Jersey, I think. Yes, yes. I don't know how I missed it. I guess I wasn't south enough. All right, so the ones that we're seeing are the children from 2004 um, in the next couple weeks. Cicadas are not locusts, which are grasshoppers. Uh, have sucking mouth parts. Locusts have chewing mouth parts, yada, yada. Um, you can eat cicadas. You will. That would be very popular. I mean, I guess they taste like crustaceans. I wouldn't eat them because I think that's gross. But uh, Large red eyes. Just look for the eyes. Ovipositor, which is used to cut slits and twigs, is on the abdomen of the female cicada, yada. Da, 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 da. Cicada could damage more than 200 types of trees. However, the maple, oak, hawthorn, red bud, and fruit trees are most susceptible. Um, I know oak. I know they like oak. Uh, have a catalpa out there. They love that tree. Um, and I know they like oak. I, I see them uh, a lot, uh, you know, the holes around the oak also. Um, so yeah, get out. I don't know. I'm sure they can. I'm sure if you found the exuviae, if you found the, uh, the shells, um, I'm sure they could tell the species also, uh, cause they can do that with dragonflies. <laughs> That's like a different level. Uh, so they might be able to do it that way. So if you find any remnants, if you, I think they probably want holes, everything. Again, shape of a dime. You have your exuviae and you have your adults dead or alive. We want to know the information. Cicada safari. Um, again, you can also check your local uh, museum, nature center. They might be doing um, some, kind, some kind of local project also. Um, but again, it's South Jersey, and it looks like it's parts of Pennsylvania also. Uh, so yeah, 64 degrees. Get your meat thermometers out there. If there's any questions on cicadas or my classes, just message me, email me, whatever. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we have a good year for the cicadas. And hopefully we have a good year with me enjoying... <laughs> what I'll be doing at my next job, at least, at least through September. And then hopefully we can get these classes started again. 
Um, again, I'm also doing uh, scout classes and other classes, homeschool classes in person. Um, hopefully, if you need me to do your classes, uh, I'll be available. Um, I just don't have a set schedule yet, so I'm not sure how that's going to be. So just message me on what you need, and that's it. All right, thank you for tuning in, and hopefully we will have another class soon at some point. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. If I could figure out how to shut this off. All right. <laughs> All right, bye, thanks.